Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my full guide on how to keep stiff on gobies. If you've been following my channel, you know I make a lot of videos about these gobies. They are a really interesting fish to keep and have a lot of personality too. Also, when they're kept well and happy, they can be some of the most colourful freshwater fish you can keep in your aquarium. These fish are relatively new to the aquarium hobby and do require a little bit more specialised care. I've kept these gobies for several years now and I've learned a lot of different things about how to look after them. So I hope by the end of this video you guys will have all the information you need to keep these gobies happy and healthy in your aquarium. There are over 30 different species of stiff on gobies scattered all over Asia. These gobies can be found in countries like China, Taiwan, Japan, Indonesia and even Australia. There are also some species that can be found further out in places like New Caledonia and Fiji. They are often found in coastal river systems on volcanic islands. Their habitats are found very close to the coast because of their very unique life cycle. I'll explain a little bit more about their life cycle in the breeding section of this video. Because of their unique life cycle, this is why they can be found all over Asia. These coastal river systems are fast flowing and have loads of algae growing on the rocks. Throughout the day, these gobies will be grazing on part of an algae that grows on these rocks. They have these pelvic fins which allow them to stick onto surfaces so they can graze on rocks in fast flowing water environments. The substrate in these river systems are often really fine gravel and even sand. This finer substrate allows the gobies to burrow underneath rocks on the riverbed. Often in their natural habitats, different species of stiffling gobies can be found living together. In addition to that, other goby species can be found living there too, along with shrimp and crayfish too. The size of stiffling gobies varies from species to species. Some species like stiffling rutilaris and stiffling anae get to about 3 to 4 cm in length. Other species like stiffling astroporus and stiffling savona get to about 4 to 5 cm in length. Then you got species like Stiflon Artus that get to about 6 to 7 cm in length. So since each species grows to a different size, you need to consider the tank size you're going to keep them in. These gobies have a relatively long lifespan for an aquarium fish. If you keep these gobies happy and healthy, they can live for about 5 to 6 years. But I've seen online that people said they kept their Stiflon gobies for about 8 to 10 years, so they do have a really long lifespan. Stiflon gobies are a relatively peaceful fish. They're not aggressive to other fish species, which makes them a potential good candidate for a community aquarium. However, male stiffed-on gobies can be a little bit territorial. Occasionally when you add a new group of males to your aquarium, you may see some aggression. You'll see the males spar and flare out their fins towards each other. This is their way to determine which males can be the most dominant in the hierarchy. You may see some fin nipping occurring, but when this happens, the males usually stop sparring. Their fins will grow back really quickly, and it usually takes about one or two days for them to fully recover. To help disperse the aggression, I recommend getting one male for every three females. Although this might be difficult to come across because females aren't really sold that often, so I recommend trying getting a pair at least. The main part of a stiffling gobby's diet is algae and biofilm. Throughout the day, you'll see your stiffling gobby's grazing on biofilm and algae that's been growing on the hardscape of your aquarium. Rocks and wood provide a really good surface area for algae and biofilm to grow on. If you want to increase the amount of algae growing on your hardscape, you can increase the lighting intensity or increase the period the lighting is on in your aquarium. More algae growing on your hardscape means your stiffling gobies will have an endless supply of free food to graze on. If you want to vary their diet up, you can feed them algae wafers or spirulina wafers. It might take a few attempts to get them to try this food, but eventually they will start to graze on it naturally. Another good algae based food to feed your gobies is Rapashi Southern Green. It's a gel based food and it's super easy to make and these gobies absolutely love it. It's a really good food to add to their diet to keep them happy and healthy. I've made a full video about Rapashi Soil and Green, so I'll leave a link in the description below and a card in the top right hand corner of this video if you want to check it out. You can also feed them blood bones and brine shrimp. These foods are packed with protein which are really good for young small gobies which need growing out. But I do think you should feed these kinds of foods sparingly as these gobies should have a mainly plant based diet. I also just want to give a quick mention to a product called Back to AE. This product is often used by shrimp keepers to help build a biofilm in your aquarium. So if you do have a relatively new immature aquarium, this product might be a really good option to try and increase the biofilm growth in your aquarium. I'm going to buy this product and test it out in my stiff and on aquarium, so I'll make a video to show you guys if it's any good or not. If you want to keep stiff on gobies, you'll probably need an aquarium that's about 45cm by 30cm. That makes it a 40 litre aquarium or almost a 9 gallon aquarium. But for these gobies, if you can have a larger aquarium, the better it will be for them. For the substrate for the aquarium, I recommend using a fine gravel. This will allow the gobies to borrow and dig into the substrate when they want to. You should also put plenty of rocks in the aquarium too. These rocks are going to provide a lot of surface area for biofilm and algae to grow on. And once the biofilm and algae have been established, the gobies can graze on these rocks 24-7. The rocks also provide an area for the gobies to borrow underneath. 
They'll try and burrow underneath the rocks to try and make a nest for when they're breeding. An interesting thing I read is that different species different on gobies have different preferences on the rocks they like. So if you have a variety of rocks and different species living in your aquarium, they might pick out their favourite rock according to what their species are used to. A good filtration system will be super important if you want to keep these gobies. Since they come from fast flowing rivers, they have a constant supply of fresh clean water to live in. This water is also super oxygenated too. So to try and replicate this, we need to get a filter that can turn the water 10 times over the volume of your aquarium. You can also get a small power head to increase the flow of your aquarium. This fast flowing water will help push oxygenated water through their gills. And this will help them to be more comfortable in your aquarium. In terms of water parameters, you should aim for a pH between 6.5 and 7.5. Then for water hardness, we should try to keep them in soft water. But they can do well in moderately hard water as long as they're acclimated correctly. I would recommend the drip acclimation method as it will slowly get your gobies used to the water they will be living in. A good temperature range to keep slip dry gobies will be between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius or 71 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Something to be aware of is that each Stiffron Gobi species come from a different habitat. Some species like Stiffron Natural Forest come from Japan where the water is cooler, whereas Stiffron Smolno come from Indonesia so they'll prefer warmer water. So it's best to adjust the temperature range to what Gobies you keep to keep them happy. These Gobies are really peaceful fish so they can get along with other fish species. They'll get along with your typical community aquarium fish like guppies, tetras, rasboras, quarries. Just try to make sure you haven't got too many bottom dwelling fish in your aquarium as these guys will be spending most of their time at the bottom of the aquarium. So the more space they have at the bottom of the aquarium, the happier they're going to be. I would say these gobies are safe with shrimp as long as they're adults, but they might try and eat baby shrimplets if they see them. Telling the difference between a male and female sift on gobies is pretty easy. Males are super colourful and have more elaborate finish. However, if males are stressed, immature or not showing their breeding colours, they will lose a lot of their colour. Females usually have less colour. Their bodies are usually white to pale yellow with horizontal black bars going across them. Species like Stiffon Simona, it can be quite easy to get the males and females mixed up. A male showing their non-breeding colours will usually have one horizontal black bar going across their body, whereas the females will have two horizontal black bars going across their body. Breeding Stiffon gobies in captivity is a very hard task to do. To my knowledge, no one successfully raised Stiffon goby fry to adulthood. The difficulty in rearing the fry to adulthood is due to the complex life cycle of these gobies. Similar to a mono shrimp, Stiffon goby fry need to live in salt water to live and grow. Female gobies will lay eggs in fresh water, but as soon as these eggs hatch they will need to be transferred to a salt water environment. The footage in the background is from Stiffon Simono showing their courtship behaviour. This footage was captured by a goby keeper called Julia. She's let me use this footage in the background in this video so please check out her Instagram and give her a follow. She has lots of photos and videos of gobies so definitely check it out. I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description below for you guys. In the footage now you can see the male's colours are really intensified. This is a sign that the male is ready to breed. The male will also start making a nest for the eggs by burrowing underneath a rock. You'll see the male use his mouth to remove any substrate underneath a rock to create a nest. Once the male has created a nest for the eggs he will have to try and court the female. He will flare his fins out and start doing almost like a dance to court the female. Also when he's doing this he will be very territorial and start to chase away any males that get too close. Once the male has impressed the female, he will go into his burrow followed by the female. They will spawn in the nest and the female will lay her eggs underneath a rock. From this one spawn she can lay up to 10,000 eggs. Once the eggs have been laid and fertilised, the female will leave the nest and the male will guard the eggs until they hatch. It will usually take about 24 hours for the eggs to develop into fry. When the eggs hatch, the fry will be about half a millimetre in length and will stick to the underside of the rock where they were laid. During the next 3-4 to four days of their life cycle, they will start to absorb the egg yolk sac on their body. This is a really important stage in the fry's life cycle as they need to get to the ocean to feed on microscopic plankton. But sadly in a captive environment it's really hard to do this stage properly. The fry are really small which makes it really difficult to transfer them into a different aquarium. The second and more difficult challenge will be to try and get the salinity level right for the fry during their life cycle. And this is what makes raising stiff and goby fry in an aquarium environment really difficult to do. Once in the ocean the fry will kind of float in the water column and start to feed on microscopic organisms like plankton. It's thought once the fry reaches sea, ocean currents can transport them all across Asia. This is why some species like Stiffel natural porous can be found in Taiwan, Japan and Indonesia. The ocean currents allow the fry to travel hundreds of kilometers away from their spawn point. After a few months, the fry will start to mature and develop their pelvic fins. When these fins are formed, the gobies will try to find their way back to a coastal river system where they will start to live their lives as adults. On average, it will take about one year for an adult to become fully mature. For this last section, I just want to share a few extra notes about keeping these gobies. 
Since all Siphon Goldbees are wild caught, they are more prone to having internal parasites. While grazing in the wild, they may consume parasitic worms. Once infected, these worms will start to steal the nutrients away from your Goldbees. You'll notice that your Goldbees will graze and eat like normal, but eventually they'll start to get skinnier and skinnier. They'll get to a point where they become super skinny and will just have no energy to survive. So to avoid this problem, you should medicate your Goldbees with anti-parasite medication. This treatment should be done before you add your Goldbees to your aquarium. A good anti-parasite medication will be Sierra Nematol. If you follow the manufacturer's instructions, they should become parasite free within a few weeks. Once you get them parasite free, they'll start to fatten up and start to mature really well. And this is what I found is the best way to keep your Goldbees surviving long term. Another thing I know is it's really hard to find female Stiflo and Goldbees. Since they aren't that colourful, most aquarium keepers won't buy them. This means wholesalers will send more males than females to local fish shops. So if you do find female Stiflo and Goldbees, I recommend buying them. If you manage to get a pair in the same species, you will get to see some breeding behaviour and it's really interesting to see. I mentioned earlier in the video that these guys have the ability to stick to surfaces using their pelvic fins. In the wild, they're able to climb waterfalls. In a home aquarium, these guys can easily climb out. So if you want to keep these guys in your aquarium, I highly recommend you having a lid on it. Otherwise, they'll find a way to escape your aquarium and that's the last thing you want. My last little note for this section is that, since these goblins are wild caught, you should really think about if you can keep these guys before you buy them. With wild caught fish, they're more likely to be overfish in their natural habitat. And since these goblins can't be tampered, they can put pressure on the natural population in their habitats. So make sure you do your research, have an established tank, and then you'll have goblins that can live for a very long time. So that's the end of my Stiffed on Goby care guide. Hopefully by me sharing my experience keeping these Goby's, you guys will be able to keep them in your aquariums too. They're such an interesting, unique, colourful fish to keep, and this is why they're one of my favourite fish I've got. If you guys found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. I've got lots of new videos planned for this channel, so keep an eye out.